Welcome to our second lecture on methods and tools for sustainable product service system design. So, in our previous lecture what we were trying to discuss is how to do project promoter analysis and defining the intervention context. So, today we will go to the next process in strategic analysis. The next process is called as reference context analysis. What we try to do in this particular um, uh, process is there are three sub processes involved. First one is production and consumption system analysis for the scope of design intervention. So, um, uh, we have identified a particular scope of design intervention. This has been identified as a result of our previous step. We will keep on iterating on to this, but for the current starting the sub process, we have identified one particular scope and we will move ahead with that scope of design intervention. So, I have to understand the production and consumption in this particular context. So, what I try to do is I have to do a summary of production and consumption system analysis for the scope of intervention by first is identification of actors and their interactions that they do amongst each other. Then I will identify the technological, cultural and regulatory dynamics. What I will uh, do is use a systems map for doing this. So, we already discussed on how to do this particular aspect, how to identify actors and their interactions. So, I will not discuss again on how to make the systems map. So, the earlier systems map in our previous slide, so our earlier um, uh, systems map, map which we did here in the process 1 project promoter analysis that was to do the systems map for the current system. This particular um, uh, systems map that I do over here is for the intervention context. So, for the scope of design intervention I create a new systems map. The next step is doing a competitor analysis. Why do I do a competitor analysis after the identification of design scope? The reason behind that is once I know what my intervention scope is, one intervention scope, it might be also couple of intervention scopes, I will only then be able to understand who my competitor is. Say for example, our previous example from uh, the last class of fresh, which is into manufacturing of uh, water, uh, water purifiers and I want to create uh, uh, my new intervention scope is also defined as uh, a PSS solution for um, uh, providing safe drinking water to my domestic consumers. As soon as I tell put this as a design um, uh, scope for intervention, I can identify who is my competitor. Will I call a company like a soft drink manufacturer say um, uh, Pepsi or Coca Cola, will they be my um, uh, competitors? No, because in the light of the design scope that I have identified, they are not my competitors. Who else can be my competitors? Maybe all other water purifier manufacturers. Say there is a particular setting in which people are more used to um, uh, buying bottled drinking water. So, they can also be my competitors in the light of the scope of design intervention. Hence, competitor analysis is done once I would have identified my scope of design intervention. Again, as I have mentioned in design, there is no linear process, we keep on iterating. So, once I would have identified the competitors and do a competitor analysis, I might understand that ok, I might have to change my score definition of uh, design intervention scope and which is quite the most normal design process. So, for doing the competitor analysis, first we identify who are the competitors then what are the most innovative offers that they have and how the market is segmented for competitive position analysis. I use a method called as model 5 Porter forces. Then my next sub process is client and or end user analysis. Why this is done right now? Because now when I know my scope of intervention, I also know my competitors, I again do my analysis of my users, the consumers, client and or end user analysis means the analysis of the customer. So, that I know what is their needs. So, analysis of their expressed and latent needs. So, the needs might be expressed explicitly by a customer and there might be certain needs which are not expressed clearly, but they are latent needs. 
which I do by using a exploring customer needs tool. So, let us see how these tools work. Before that, we will look at the key questions that we need to ask in this particular process which is the reference context an analysis. First question is how is the entire production and consumption chain structured in relation to the scope of intervention or satisfaction unit? Who are the main actors both public as well as private actors and their respective interests? What are the technological, cultural and regulatory dynamics influencing or of potential influence to characteristics of the production and consumption chain? Then who are my main competitors? What are their offers and how do these differ from those of the project proposals? Who are the potential client and end users and what are their needs? Are their needs satisfied? So, let us because we have already seen how to do the systems map. What we will start with in this particular lecture is how to do competitor analysis by using a method called as model 5 Porter forces. So, Porter's 5 forces is a tool for understanding the competitiveness of a business environment and for identifying your strategy's potential profitability. This is called as 5 forces because there are 5 forces in this. So, force 1 is competitive rivalry. What it means is this looks at the number and strength of competitors. Say for example, for the case of fresh and say the design intervention con context is PSS for supplying safe drinking water to domestic users. I will have to look up all different rival uh, competitors in that particular kind of a segment. I will not look exactly in the PSS segment, maybe there are not many competitors in that particular segment, but I will also have to compete against all those uh, companies who sell their water purifiers and which can be also be a substitute product. So, I will look at the number of those competitors and I will look at their strengths. So, say for example, there is another company X which is a way which does not offer a piece of service at this moment, but they are a big company and once they see that fresh is becoming very popular and uh, gaining market strength because of its strategy, they might e very easily switch to PSS that is a possibility. So, I need to understand the number and the strength of competitors in that particular domain. How many rivals do you have? who are they and how does the quality of their product and some services compare with yours. When you know the comparison, then you can build up your product or service in a manner that the competitive gap is very large. The next force is supplier power. This is determined by how easy it is for your suppliers to increase their prices. So, in order to make your dispenser, you will buy components or uh, parts from uh, certain uh, suppliers. If your suppliers are very strong, they might uh, increase the price and then your margins can uh, suffer. Say for example, uh, company X manufactures smart mobile phones and buys its chips from a company Y, which at this moment is very strong, very big in providing high quality chips. But now, uh, company Y also decides to enter into the smartphone um, uh, domain. They because they are the global leaders in making chips, they can any day increase the price of the chips. They can also say, okay, I will not su supply chips to company X because they are now my competitor because in the smartphone market. So, now company X understands that my supplier of chips, which is the most important component in my uh, smartphone is very powerful. Let me bring in other suppliers, otherwise my smartphone can be killed any day just because of the fact I am not being able to have the chips or have them at a mm, competitive price. So, how many potential suppliers do you have? So, you might have one supplier from whom you are taking the product right now, but you should also be able to identify potential suppliers. If there is only one supplier in the whole market, you become overly dependent on that supplier and the supplier can uh, charge you high prices for the product. Hence, identification of potential suppliers is very important. Now, how unique is the product or service that they provide and how expensive would it be to switch from one supplier to another? The next one is buyer power. In this context, you ask yourself how is it 
how easy it is for buyers to drive your prices down how many buyers are there and how big are their orders say for example there are large number of buyers there Let's say there are ten uh, million buyers, but each one of them buys for one rupee only. But in that particular context, even with one rupee, you are going to be able to make ten million rupees. But say your product uh, is going to fetch you uh, one lakh rupees, but you have only five buyers. so you are anyways making only 5 lakh rupees so it's very important to understand how many buyers as well as what how big are their orders and then take up appropriate decision accordingly how much would it cost for them to switch from your products and services to those of a rival say for example most of the uh, ne set top boxes in our homes they come from a particular company who sells you the service along with the set top box and the dish antenna maybe which comes along with it the you pay for that set top box as well as the dish antenna it costs you something around 2000 to 3000 rupees that is not a very big amount of money which will create a barrier between switching from one service provided to another but it is usually seen that even that small amount of money is a big enough barrier people do not want to switch to another company for until and unless the previous company is extremely bad with its services so it one has to understand what would it cost them to switch from your products and services to those of a rival are your buyers strong enough to dictate terms to you say for example there are contexts in which buyers forums are extremely strong and they can actually dictate a manufacturer to behave in a certain manner the fourth force is called as threat of substitution this refers to the likelihood of your customers finding a different way of doing uh, what you do say for example the uh, certain municipalities decide that they will Uh, have their own uh, supply of uh, drinking water to each and every home and the water will be so good quality that you do not need to purify it purify it using any particular device or say uh, building uh, constructors decide that i will start building houses with inbuilt uh, water purifiers which are from up, uh, which are industrial scale or bigger scale water purifiers and give connections to everybody's house or say for example the um, uh, local consumption pattern changes and uh, people shift to bottled drinking water or for say example uh, people uh, become aware of the fact that the water quality is decent enough and you do not need any kind of water purification to be so these are situations in which substitution can happen from your current product so you have to understand what are those threats of substitution then comes threat of new entry so think about how easily this could be done how easy is it to get a foothold in your industry or market how much would it cost and how tightly is your sector regulated so another company who sees the success of uh, your product or your product uh, service system and wants to enter into that field that is a threat of new entry so you have to understand how easy it is to enter into the market in terms of technology development in terms of infrastructure development for entry in terms of the finances required for doing the same in terms of building customer loyalty also in terms of something called as how tightly is your sector regulated say for example the sector the medical sector is very highly regulated so for the threat of new entrant is lower over there but there are so many other sectors where regulation is not very strong and hence new players can enter more easily because of the regulation being absent so in the context of the reference context analysis we do a competitor analysis after that we need to try to understand the client or the end user by doing a exploring a customer needs this is the point at which we actually define our uh, market definition completely so when i would have designed so there are so as we discussed in our lca uh, how to do a life cycle assessment we had a framework which was for the design framework which was different from the reporting framework 
So when you are doing design all these steps that I am talking about they are done in an iterative process one step gives you more information and you can go and change certain uh, steps which were previously done you can repeat them you can modify your design intervention that is one part that is one way of doing it iteratively when you are doing in the design process. When you are going to do reporting of your design process at the end of the design process you can follow the structure as it is told. In that particular case because all of your concepts have been refined perfectly so when you write about the scope of design intervention you write the final scope of design intervention that you have identified as a result mm, at the end of the whole design process that we are going to have. So, let us see how do we explore customer needs. So, in exploring customer needs we have two steps. Step 1 is we try to define my define the market. So, how do we try to do this is the space with which new PSS ideas are looked for should be defined. To visualize the market definition the company puts the functionality of the current product PSS or the foreseen the one which you want to design PSS in the middle of the figure. So, say for example, in the middle of this uh, figure I have incorporated the uh, new um, PSS that I want to come up with which is fresh water as a PSS. So, that is my market definition main market definition. Then what I try to do is then essential characteristics example physical characteristics of the um, product market segment targeted etcetera that define possible new PSS ideas and are inside the scope for Mm, scope are placed inside the figure. So, here you can see there is a boundary that I have. So, inside that boundary I will put say my product characteristics, my service characteristics, my mm, uh, market segment that I am trying uh, that I am going to target all these different aspects which define what my market definition for that PSS is what it is and it is also very important that uh, when you want to say ok my product is this and not that. So, outside the mm, uh, boundary I put things what my product is not. So, let us see a bigger picture of this and try to discuss it in detail. Say for example, after my previous step brainstorming I say that my market definition is going to be fresh water as a PSS. So, firstly I define my target is domestic use. I kept commercial use outside the box because I want to clearly say that it is meant for domestic use and it is not meant for commercial use. Commercial use is outside the scope. So, domestic use. Then the product should be owned by fresh. What is the opposite for that? Product ownership transferred to the customer. So, I am clearly defining that my offering will have product owned by fresh. I say that my product will be solar powered. My other option which is main electricity powered I can I have put completely outside the box. You can also consider because it is your design and it is a mutually agreed between your client and your customers and everybody you can also design to have a hybrid powered product. But in this but, but in case you want a hybrid power you again define it in this particular box. Since in this box I wanted to say ok I want a product which is solar powered and not mains electricity powered. So, I have kept them totally outside. Then comes ok no running water necessary. Again a product characteristic definition this will have all, all these things solar powered no uh, running no water running necessary they will have an implication or in your product specification. Whereas, the um, domestic use that will also have a um, uh, implication on your specification. Product owned by fresh that will have an implication on the Mm, uh, how you make money out of this uh, scheme, how people pay for it. So, I put running water outside. So, when I say no running water necessary, it might also mean that if you have running water there is not a problem. If I would have said, said that it runs only by when somebody fills water into it that has a different meaning as compared to no running water necessary. So, it is very important that you choose the words in a manner that you can define those words properly what do they exactly imply in terms of product specification. So, when I say no running water necessary it means it can run even if there is running water and even if there is no running water. Then I say ok pay per liter of water consumed that is 
in the market definition how I am going to make people pay for it and it is contrasted to the paper uh, product service. So then smart device I also want it to become a smart device what my smartness will be in this case is auto service actuation. So it has some components which detects before the product is going to break down that it is going to break down and it sends a message to the service center and they come and repair it. Because right now the product is owned by fresh so it should be done that particular manner otherwise if the product is not running then fresh is not making money. It might be also like if your product breaks down repairing it at that point of time might be more expensive for fresh. Then water testing service which determines the type of purifier to be installed. So right now in the market it is like one solution fits all whatever be your source water quality you always have one particular product. But what I am saying that in my offering I will give a water testing service which determines which type of purifier because it is a PSS in which the product is owned by the company. So the company actually does not make more money by selling you a more expensive machine. What uh, they are making money on is giving you safe drinking water. Again in this particular context if we come back to this. So if we come back to our center which had the definition of fresh water as a PSS. Again be very careful with the words that we are using. Does fresh and safe have different meanings? Fresh water, safe water, pure water, mineral water all of these have very different meanings. So whenever you are doing a market definition and if I say fresh water I have to define them because right now I am talking about customer needs. So I have to understand okay what customers definition of fresh water is. So be careful about the words that is being used. So the step 2 of this exploring your customer needs after market definition is improving understandings of needs fulfillment. What we do over here is a, a match needs to be so uh, we need to uh, do a match between the needs that are identified and the ways in which the product or PSS fulfills those needs or functions. So say for example in our previous slide we spoke about delivering fresh water. We did not speak about delivering safe drinking water, mineral water or anything else. We declared that we will give fresh water. So we have to understand whether the identified and the way in which a product or pieces fulfills those are in sync or not or do I need to change it. So to explore needs fulfillment identify which case you are in. You can either do a min means end chain analysis or you can do a needs and function analysis. So what is the difference? So means end chain analysis is to be preferred when the base of the product the base of the PSS is a product. So you remember when we are talking about the types of PSS we said there are three types of PSS product oriented, service oriented and result oriented. So when I am in a PSS which is a product oriented PSS and my target market segment for the PSS is the same of, as of the current offer from the company then a means end chain analysis is good enough. When my PSS is a service oriented PSS then uh, th and the concept is very innovative and cannot be tested using means end analysis then a needs and function analysis is supposed to be done. It does not mean that for a product oriented PSS you cannot do needs and function analysis you can of course do it. It will so needs and function analysis is a way much more in depth analysis and gives you much better results because it tells you that uh, it it can give you real good innovative push towards uh, new product designs. So let us see what means and chain analysis is about. So before doing this analysis first in the uh, team we try to brainstorm on some issues. First is what are the main functional and psychological benefits. So from the uh, fresh water PSS my functional benef main functional benefit is safe drinking water. My psychological benefit is when I told fresh water that is a psychological that I am trying to target I am not saying safe water, safe water is a different psychology, fresh water is a different psychology. So there can be other psychological benefits say which can be related to your status symbol, to having a designer uh, product in your house, 
to have a responsible product in your house all these are psychological benefits so anything that you buy or anything that you use gives you functional benefit and psychological benefits so first in a team you try to identify all the functional and psychological benefits then try to see does the current product or pss really provide these benefits which benefits can be optimized or added once you have done whether it is being fulfilled or not then you identify which can be optimized or added and what pss attributes could provide these benefits once the brainstorming is done the means end chain analysis comes into picture which is basically analyzing the brainstorming whatever you have got out of the brainstorming while you do this analysis you will be able to come up with more of these uh, functional and psychological benefits so how we do this particular analysis establish a hierarchical value map based on six types of values so these six types of values are concrete attributes abstract attributes functional consequences psychosocial consequences instrumental value and terminal value so let's try to understand what are these so if i put them in uh, organization chart my concrete attribute attributes come at the first level so concrete attributes can be also understood as product specification so say for example my water purifier delivers 10 liters of water per hour that's a product specification and that is my concrete attribute concrete then comes my abstract attribute abstract attribute is so when i say a reliable product reliability is an abstract concept you can get in reliability by having certain concrete attributes say for example reliability might mean because it's a context where there is uh, water all the time so if you use stainless steel uh, fasteners then they will not get rusted so you get a longer lasting product because of the uh, concrete attribute of using stainless steel uh, fasteners but my abstract attribute over there was a reliable product my abstract attribute can be a beautiful product so whenever you cannot actually be specific about the attribute but they are in the more abstract that's my second level then comes my third level which are functional consequences because of the attributes that i built into it i will have certain functional consequences because my product is a reliable product the functional consequence of it can be that it is meant for robust usage it gives safe drinking water they are functional consequences as a result of the functional consequences you get psychosocial consequences that it gives certain kind of a psychological feeling you trust that product so that's your psychological consequence because it is reliable because it is giving safe drinking water there are the functional consequences your psychological uh, psychosocial uh, consequence of it is that you trust that product as a result of the this consequence you gather certain instrumental value so let's see what are uh, terminal values and instrumental values so instrumental values represent the kinds of preferential behavior to reach the terminal ones they have a moral and a competence kind of a nature so in my case the terminal value over here is i want to get safe drinking water or fresh drinking water so my terminal value is i want sustainable fresh water what are my instrumental values environment conscious consumption smart citizen so you can see both of these environmental conscious consumption that's a moral value smart citizen is a competence related value so in Uh, instrumental values instrumental values help you to reach the terminal value instrumental values have a moral uh, or a uh, competence kind of a nature which is built because of the uh, psychosocial consequences terminal values are a representation of preference of final state of existence so in our context the final state of existence was sustainable fresh water so once you uh, build up uh, all these in these three layers what you try to do is see the connections so your 
concrete attribute 1 might be connected to many of these abstract attributes. While you are trying to build the um, uh, linkages, you will identify missing linkages that is when you keep on adding um, uh, either your if you find that there is a concrete attribute which is missing you add over there or you find uh, abstract attribute is missing you mention over there. Similarly, each abstract attribute will be connected to one or more of the functional consequences those will be connected to one or more psychosocial consequences these should be connected to instrumental values and which finally, connect to the terminal value you always have one terminal value do not try to have too many terminal values for the PSS then your PSS lacks focus. So, let us come back to the example of fresh. So, as I told you I have my lowest level which is my concrete attributes you can start from the concrete attributes in case it is known to you you may also omit that particular part to begin with and start from your abstract attributes. Once I have my abstract attributes I can start building the product specification which is my concrete attributes that is a possibility. So, in case of my in case of fresh my first abstract attribute is I want to deliver fresh water. Second one is I want the product to be very intuitive or the product service to be very intuitive. I want it to be very stylish you can see all these are abstract words I do not know how to operationalize them which I will know when I define the product in a specification out of them. Then I want to have the product in a manner that it matches my decor say for example, what will be a product specification to satisfy that particular requirement it might be that I de develop a modular machine whose outer coverings outer covering is the thing which is visible to people and which should match with your decor whose outer covering can be customized by people as per their requirement. So, I build this custom built outer coverings. So, I build my machine in a manner that I design a machine in a manner that that is possible. I want to have a smart device again smart device over here is an abstract attribute because it does not say where its smartness lies that will come in the product specification. Then I want to have a low running cost easy servicing it should be always up which means the product never mm, uh, goes down there is no downtime for the product and there are no wastages. When I say no wastage in the product specification I define what does that mean that might mean no wastage of water in uh, RO based purifiers there is lot of water which is wasted. So, do is it that what I mean which I will add in the product specification or does it mean that mm, when the product is no longer a useful product I will have the company collects it back which means there is no wastage of. Uh, so, what this no wastage means I will define in the product specification. Now, let us go to the functional consequence in functional consequence I said ok high efficiency cost so these are my brainstorming results I still not made the connections I have to make the connections high efficiency customizable all these are functions uh, low cost safe and portable let us try to make connections between the abstract attributes and the functional consequences. So, when I say fresh water I can connect it to safe and portable I cannot connect it to customizable low cost or high efficiency I see intuitive uh, I do not know uh, over here the only thing because if it is intuitive that also implies high efficiency I can connect to it here it shows that ok I did not have a functional consequence of that maybe I will have to think of a functional consequence which is arising out of intuitivity. So, let us go ahead let us see ok stylish which uh, because so now it comes how I am going to define stylish stylish if I connect it to customizable it means the stylization is being achieved the uh, because of the possibility that I can customize it. But if I want to mean something different I will have to add another attribute and functional consequence matching my decor that also connects to customizable smart device smart device can imply that it is highly efficient it can also imply that it is low cost as soon as I connect my smart device to low cost in my product specification I will have to have things so that because of the smartness 
cost reduces. I can also connect my smart uh, device to say customizability because it is smart that is why it is customizable then it has certain other implications on the product specification. Low running cost leads to low cost. Low running cost can be also related to customizable which means depending on the family's requirement my low running cost can mean different things. I can also combine low cost to high efficiency because my product is very highly efficient. So, it is low cost. Easy servicing can be again connected to um, uh, low cost because it is easy to service. So, I have low cost and I can also relate it to high efficiency. Always up can be again related to um, uh, low cost. So, as soon as you relate it to a functional consequence you have to be aware because now it defines it that always up means the cost is low. So, you have to define it in terms of product consequence. Now, now, you can see the implication of doing this whole process. It requires quite considerable amount of time to do this particular activity and it is very iterative. Now, let us try to connect the functional consequences with psychosocial consequences. So, if I take uh, high efficiency, is high efficiency connected to smartness? Say I say high efficiency is connected to smartness. Now, I go back. I have connected high efficient to smart device ok that works with smartness good. I have combined high efficiency with low running cost. So, low running cost, high efficiency and smart do they make sense or low running cost which leads to high efficiency makes sense to connect it to responsible behavior or is it low running cost high efficiency is it connected to status? No, it is not connected to status ok. I have connected my high efficiency to intuitiveness also. So, which also can get connected to smart it might also get connected to. So, ok not in this case to any other point. So, then let us come to customizable. So, you can see that each time you go to the next layer you have to again go back to the entire chain and see whether the linkages could be created or not or whether you need to add on new attributes, new consequences mm, or need to change the product specification itself. Say now my smart device is related to smart citizen, tech savvy is related to smart citizen. So, then so now when I created this relationship ok sustainable fresh water related to smart citizenship, smart citizenship is related to smart product and tech savviness. The smart I go back to be connected to my low cost and the smart is also connected to high efficiency. It is connected to um, say smart device, low cost, intuitive and stylish which means in my product technical definition I have to rework it again. So, this is how we complete the whole process. Now, let us go to needs and function analysis. So, in needs and function analysis, it tries to overcome the limitations of the means end analysis. So, in case time permits. So, a means end analysis might take you a day or two to complete, but in case you have a little bit more time than that, it is way much better that you go for a needs and function analysis. There are many uh, limitations of the means and analysis which will be overcome by this in because in needs and function I start with needs and then I get into the functions which can be provided to um, achieve that. So, it opens the mind to new kinds of customers widening the thinking rather than the previous one which is with the same kind of customers as you have currently. So, the list of questions partly overlaps the means and end analysis the ones which are same are marked by asterisk. So, take the current product or offer and see what are its applications. So, um, uh, this is similar to your previous one which functions does it fulfill for end users or customer in other words which functional benefits does it provide again same who are the end users and who are the other users. This is the point where you divert. So, I knew that my end users I had decided they are going to be domestic users, but now I start thinking can the same product be used by other users also. Say for example, shop, small shop owners, small office own, uh, offices and so on. Which needs does, so in this case uh, because I have fresh water. So, you will put whatever your project is 
in that particular location so which needs does natural fresh water satisfy for customers in other words what psychosocial benefits does it give what needs are not fulfilled completely and should or could be satisfied better so this is a new question this uh, asks you to think of all those things which are not uh, done already so in other words what psychosocial benefits can be improved reflect upon market research if that has not been carried out already which means so, sorry which meanings connotations and attitudes are attached to the product which meanings and connotations should be stressed to make the offer more attractive and which negative meanings and connotations should be overcome or evaded question to evoke extra psychosocial benefits and relating them back to the product or pss attributes are part of this take a step back and look from a distance at the function that the product under scrutiny which is fresh water has in society enumerate economic functions cultural functions fulfilled by fresh water and the social meanings of fresh water if relevant mention for whom fresh water so this is a mistake over here it should be so if relevant mention for whom fresh water fulfills those functions enumerate exhaustively the products and services that the new pss may replace in which existing and imaginable products and services does natural fresh water have a function so now you are widening your scope after you have done this select which functions or attribute should be stressed maximize those functionalities think of new pss ideas that maximize those functionalities once all once that brainstorming is done following the needs and function you brainstorm on each and every question then you again go back to your six type values listed in means and end analysis so with all those keywords so you generate way much more keywords than what you generated in the means and analysis you think your scope uh, of thinking widens uh, and you again do the same process but of course this will take way much longer time than the means and analysis so once this is done you are complete with the reference context analysis as a res result of the reference context analysis you can do modifications of the scope of design intervention that you came up earlier with you can if there are major mm, modifications you will also need to modify the systems map and in case you are uh, need more mm, competitors coming into you might have to do this model 5 portal forces analysis again for those uh, new competitors coming into picture the next uh, part is uh, sis is called as system carrying structure um, analysis what we do over here is a macro trend analysis so we try to identify the social economic and technological macro trends and their influence on the reference context what it means is say in the context of uh, safe drinking water what are the social trends at this point of time say for example in uh, certain markets the social uh, trend is about drinking water without purification because there is some movement of people who is saying that uh, natural water water without any kind of uh, purification gone uh, through is way much more better than um, all the purification techniques maybe they are not it's not about whether they are right or wrong it's about a particular social trend which is being followed in certain section there might be other social um, uh, norms say for example there might be certain sections of the society who believe that water should be um, uh, drinking water should be kept at a height then comes economic uh, trends so say um, more and more companies are moving towards pss that can be a economic trend Uh, technological trend so there is some other machine uh, way of purifying water say we discussed about what ex purification so a system in which you have what ex purification then you have a uv purification happening or say what ex purification followed by ultraviolet purification or some other newer technologies which might be coming up in this particular uh, field so the key question over here is what are the main social economic and technological macro trends how may these influence the reference context and consequently the design options so we basically prepare a uh, report to uh, which reports all these particular aspects and will inform our design directions 
eventually when we get into design um, uh, process. The fourth process in strategic analysis is analysis of cases of excellence for sustainability. Say for example, in the context of providing safe drinking water, there are certain examples which are which can be called as cases of excellence. Why? Be uh, because they are excellence in terms of sustainability. So, they might be PSS solutions, they might be only product oriented solution, they might be result oriented um, uh, PSS also, any of those which you think are in that particular domain are a and are examples of cases of excellence. So, I pick up those cases, first I will try to identify what is the offer composition and ex and the interaction with the users of that particular offer, actors who produce and deliver the offer and then we try to understand the sustainability characteristics. So, how we try to understand the first one which is offer composition and interaction with the user? we make something called as interaction tab sto table or storyboard or animatic. In animatic what we try to do is we try to create a audio visual clip of uh, the particular um, interaction or the particular offering which explains that. In case that is not a possibility you can create an interaction storyboard. We will see what an interaction storyboard is. To understand the actors who produce and deliver the offer and how do they do it, we create a systems map. In order to understand the sustainability characteristics, we will go through a tool which is called as sustainability design orienting uh, toolkit. So, the key questions in this particular step is what is the offer in terms of product and services of these cases of excellence? How does the user interact with the offer? Who are the actors in the offer system? What are their intentions? What are the environmental, socio-ethical and economic advantages? So, how do we, so making an animatic all of us know that we are going to capture a video. How do we make an interaction table? So, it is a very uh, simple thing. I will create these boxes. Each of these boxes, I will place an image that describes the action outlining the actors involved with the corresponding colors indicated in the legends. I can insert maximum 4 scenes, but in case you need more than that to describe your um, uh, particular interaction, you can use more also. And below each of those, I describe the action which is being performed. Here in this case, I will write who the customer is, who the provider is, who uh, others are the other stakeholders. If they are not a customer, if they are not a provider, then they are others. And I will put the mm, uh, labels or the legends or the icons that we have developed for them in this particular mm, uh, chart. I will not discuss about the systems map because we already discussed how to make a systems map. Let us, we will discuss about sustainability design orienting toolkit. Mm. Before we get into understanding what this toolkit is, let us go to the process 5 which is the last process of this uh, particular strategic analysis uh, stage because that process also uses us in this SDO toolkit. So, this process says analyze sustainability and determine priorities for the design intervention in view of sustainability. How do we do this? Is do a existing cost context analysis from an environmental socio-ethical and economic point of view and define the design priorities. This is of the existing. Why do I do it after going through the cases of excellence? Because it helps me in understanding what makes a case of excellence and then I can do this process little better. You can also do uh, this process 5 before process 4. Uh, there are also times when you might not find cases of excellence. In that cases, mm, the process 4 can also be uh, mm, not done. So, even to do this particular process, I use the same toolkit which is called as the mm, SDO toolkit checklist existing system. The key questions over here is, what is the situation in the existing context regarding environmental, socio-ethical and economic sustainability? What are the design priorities for each dimension of sustainability? This process is one of the most important processes because this is the process which initiates into the sustainability direction. So, this is the link to the SDO toolkit. It is a free to use toolkit. It is a flash based uh, uh, toolkit. So, this is the SDO toolkit. It is a flash based uh, software. 
So, you have to allow flash to work on your um, uh, computer to use this particular tool. In this tool, first you have to create a new um, uh, um, uh, project. Let us name our project as fresh water PSS. It is very important to remember the name of the um, uh, project that you um, uh, kept with the exact combination of Mm, uh, the mm, whether it is caps or whether it is small because in order to load the same project again you will need that particular mm, uh, uh, name. So, once I say new ok so I can load the project. So, this is how the software looks like. It has menu reload, logout, help, print and save. When you press print, it will print the page which is on uh, you are at that moment. On every page you need to press uh, print to get a print of that particular page. After you have done your work, you should save the uh, work. It does not get saved automatically. The uh, left hand uh, the corner that you see over here is the menu bar in um, when I go into certain aspects say for example, I go to this particular aspect and I start working on to it and if the menu goes away, I can click it to get back the menu. So, what this how do I start with is there is no sequence uh, exact sequence in which you need to work you can come back and fill these details later also does not matter. So, you put the project name, the company name, the designers, the satisfaction unit that you are trying to uh, satisfy, you describe the existing system, you do a case study description and you do concept description. Once I am done with it, I go to the each of these dimensions. So, I clicked on environmental sustainability. My first uh, point is analyze and set the priority. So, that was what was spoken about in this particular um, uh, slide that we were on. We wanted to do an analysis of the best cases, uh, cases of excellence as well of the current uh, scenario. So, in the analyze and set priorities, we do that particular activity a particular dimension say for example, system life optimization in that particular context might have no priority, might have low, might have medium or high priority. So, I have six uh, uh, six sub dimensions in environmental sustainability, system life optimization, transportation distribution, resource reduction, waste minimization, valorization, conservation, biocompatibility and toxicity reduction. How do we determine the uh, uh, priority level? So, when I clicked on system life optimization, you see a checklist which appears over here. You go and click on each of these, they have various questions that are asked to you. So, do parts of the system tend to be technologically obsolete or to be culturally or aesthetically obsolete? So, you are supposed to uh, write down your comments answers and uh, whatever you want to write over here and then again go to the next block. Uh, although I the question changes over here, this particular block remains the same. So, whatever you um, write over here will remain the same and it you keep on answering this. After you have answered all the questions, either you as a designer can decide the priority or maybe the decision can, can be taken along with your client or in other sto stakeholders involved in this. So, I set the priority at each level. Then you can see I have this on for existing system that is my step 5. My step 4 was of two cases of excellence. So, I pick up my case of excellence and do the same activities for my case of excellence 1 and for case of excellence 2. After this uh, part is done, in the next step which uh, in the next stages of the um, MSDS methodology where we will do we will explore opportunities, we will validate the opportunities, we will go to the next levels. Same is the case with the socio ethical dimension when I go to analyze over there, 
I will see same kind of a checklist popping up over here as well and I can again start giving my priorities writing my comments by answering the mm, uh, questions uh, and here is for the case study 1 and case study 2 same for the economic sustainability once this is done I will save it and then I will log out from this system. So, I will discuss all other modules of SDO toolkit uh, in the subsequent lectures when we are on those uh, parts of using the SDO toolkit. So, the key questions over, so we already discussed the key questions. So, this brings us to an end of the strategic analysis for a context where we have a project uh, promoter. So, the aim was to obtain information necessary to facilitate the generation of sustainable system innovation ideas. We had our process one which was analyze the project proposals and outline the intervention context, then analyze the context of reference, analyze the carrying structure of the system, analyze cases of sustainable best practices, analyze sustainability of existing system and determine priorities for the design intervention in view of sustainability. In case I do not have anything for this particular step, analyze cases of sustainable best practice, say nobody has done anything in that particular field which is also a possibility, then I can also mm, avoid that particular mm, step. In the, mm, the reading material continues to be the same for you. In the next lecture in next week, we will be discussing about how to do strategic analysis when no one stakeholder can be identified as the primary stakeholder. That is in a multi-stakeholder system, mm, which is something called as a socio-economic ecosystem. Thank you.